So previously we've considered examples for where a language isn't regular. Now I thought I would consider a family of languages, so I'll, I'll cackle one of them and then I'll show you how you'd proceed with another example. So we're going to consider the language of palindromic strings. The, so these palindromes, if you've never heard of these before, they're simply strings that are read the same front to back as they are back to front. You may have heard of the word like race car. Race car is a palindrome. Because if you take the word race car, read it left to right, it says race car. If you read it from right to left, it's race car. So this is an example of a palindrome. So here's another example, 1011101. So notice this is an odd length one because you'll notice that the length of the string is odd. And a typical thing you'll run into with these odd length palindromes is when you read it, you'll always get this middle one here that sort of just comes up for free. There's a symmetry that happens across the middle, but we get a free one in the middle. So we're going to be considering these odd length palindromes first. So this language isn't regular. So we're going to consider El Palo, which is going to simply be all strings consisting of zero, sorry, of A's and B's. I thought it would change it up a little bit. A's and B's, where W is an odd length palindrome. We're going to show that this isn't regular. El Palo isn't regular. So what's the first thing that we do? When we want to try using the pumping lemma in a contradiction proof. Well, first, if we want to use contradiction, we got to, we want to show, if we want to show that it's not regular, we're going to assume that it is regular in order to derive a contradiction. So we're going to assume El Palo is regular. So if I want to use the, re the uh, pumping lemma, which I'll just abbreviate as PL, what happens? Well, I end up getting this constant P, which we call the pumping length. I get that for free when I assume this. So it follows from the pumping lemma that there is, is a constant P. A constant P constant P that follows its conditions. So now we got to pick the string. Now we're going to be very careful here because remember we need to make sure the strings in the language, right? Has to be in the language. That's one thing. It has to be at least the pumping length and its length. But I want to pick it such that it makes it easy for me to determine the form of the string, regardless of how the pumping lemma dissects the string into three substrings, x, y, and z. So a tip I was going to mention here is that I end up with this, uh, I have something get with a, I sort of have a symmetry that happens here where I have a free spot in the middle. That's what happens with these odd length palindromes. So why don't I try to do something with that? So I'm going to let W be A to the P, B, A to the P. You'd agree with me that this is indeed a palindrome, right? It's just going to be a bunch of A's, but there's going to be exactly P of them, then a B, then there's going to be exactly P A's that follow the B. Similar to the form we have here, except now I literally just made them all A's, right? I have a bunch of A's, a bunch of A's, but there's exactly P of them. Then I have a B, then I have a bunch of A's, but there's exactly P of them, right? So this is indeed an odd length palindrome. So that's indeed in the language. As the length of W is at least the pumping length. We can Actually, I'll say, as the length of W is at least the pumping length, W can be divided, can be divided 
divided as w is equal to x, y, z into the three parts, where, where the y part isn't empty, it isn't an empty string, and the length of x, y is at least the pumping length. So let's take a look carefully at how I pick w here. So what will happen with the with x, y? Well, it's at least it's going to be at sorry, it's going to be at most p. I should be a bit more precise. Sorry. Um, it's going to be at most p. So what's going to look what's y going to consist of? It's going to occur the first p symbols, this y part. It's going to be just be a's, right? So let's look at that. So notice, so notice that x, y, x, y consists, consists entirely of a's. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let x, the length of x be i. Because I always like to show you a little bit of a different way to write this stuff out. I'll, I'm going to adopt something slightly different so that you could see how I could write out the form of the string. So I'm going to remember I don't know what the length of x is. I don't know what the length of y is. So I'm just going to give them names. Then. W will look like this. It'll be a to the i, a to the j, a to the p minus i plus j, because this is everything else. Remember, it's a to the p, b, a to the p. So this would be everything else for my a's. And then I have b, and then I have a to the p. That's what the string will look like. I remember, I don't have control over what i and j are. But that's what it's going to look like. So we're going to consider string x, y to the 0, z. So I'm going to pick k is 0, which is equal to x, z which is in, of course, El Palo by the pumping lemma. That's what I get out of the last property, that we, well, the last, uh, last thing that we get out of that split that occurs. So now, let's take a look at what happens to XZ. However, as Y isn't empty, it isn't the empty string, J j has a particular value it has to have a particular value right it's at least one and i wanted to make sure that form was over there because so we could use it and now what i'm going to do is because now i know that j is at least one what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to write out what this looks what what does xz look like when i take that form and i just pull out what uh what that j component is so, and xz is equal to 0 to the i, 0 to the p minus i plus j, b, a to the p, where, where we have i plus so how many zeros are there? Sorry, not zeros. Uh, how many A's? I was, for some reason I wrote A's. Sorry, zeros. There we go. We got, we got our A's here. My apologies. <laughs> They're easy enough to make into A's. So I got A to the I. A to the P minus I plus J together. The I plus J is together. Where? Let's look at how many uh, A's I have on this first part here. Remember, this has to equal P for this to be still in the language, right? So, so I got i plus 
P minus I plus J. Well, this, notice I have an I there. I'm going to subtract off I here. Well, this is equal to P minus J. But remember, J is, greater, is, is at least 1. So that means that this is strictly less than P. So there are less A's in the first part, in the first part, than in the second part. Because this is how many are in the second part, right? So what does that imply? Implying xz isn't in El Palo, which is a contradiction, right? Therefore, El Palo isn't, is not regular. That's the end of the proof. So, we see in other examples akin to where we pick W and then we make an observation about it. Sometimes you want to get a little bit more precise about what's happening in each part. This helps me talk about the first part versus the second part. So we had our first part, then we have the second part. I showed you that there's less A's than there are A's in the second part. So I have my first part, second part, now there's less A's in the first part. So. You might ask, Dan, what about if I considered palindromes with even length? So that would be, for example, if I had a palindrome that looks like this. So notice that if I read it this way, it has, first it's an even length. So I have eight symbols here. It's the same as me reading it this way, right? One, one, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So this is an even length palindrome. How about those? Are those regular? No, no, no. You could show that you could show also that the language of even length palindromes is not regular. You might ask, Dan, how would I go about that? I'll give you a tip. It's not really that much of a change, but we need to make sure we keep in mind and we come back to something that we've seen in one of our first examples. We one of the we want to do is take something out of like we, we compare two parts and they have equal numbers. Well, fortunate for us, reading it from forward to backwards versus backwards to forwards. If I tweak with something in the first part, there isn't a free space at all, like we had in this odd case. So if I just tweak with something in the first part, the first half, then it most certainly it'll, it will cause some problems if I pick the string appropriately. So if you're wondering how I might go about that, you might try the following string for W. So I encourage you to try this yourself. So so you might try using this string. So I encourage you to try using this string and seeing if you can make it work for all for proving that the language of even length palindromes is in fact not regular as well.